Hey guys, happy Monday. Hope your day is going great so far. Um, for today's Bible study, as you guys know that we've been doing for quite a bit now, for the last couple of weeks, uh, the Jesus Storybook Bible. And I've been reading it along with my kids and they're actually here again. So if you hear them, that's them in the background. Um, so the title for today's um, chapter is called The Warrior Leader. Okay, and it's based in on Joshua 3 through 6. Um, and the title is Joshua and the Battle of Jericho. This is one of the coolest, I think, stories in scripture. Um, if I could, like if we're in heaven, I could, and God would ask me, would you just go back in time? Would you, if you could go back in time and relive or rewatch uh, any event, I'd be like, dude, I would love to see Jericho and what's gonna happen you know, here. So, all right, let me not spoil it for you. Um, let's start. It says, after Moses died, God gave his people a new leader. His name was Joshua, which means the Lord saves. And actually, my second son, his name is Luke Joshua. So, um, yes, it's because my husband's favorite uh, verse is Joshua 1.9. That's why. Sorry, side note. I deviate. Joshua was going to lead God's people into the special land God had promised to give them. By this time, God's people had been wandering around in the baking desert for 40 years. So you can imagine how sick they were of sand, anything yellow, and tents, and walking, and being hot. And how happy they were to reach the edge of the desert and to see their beautiful new home right there in front of them, all cool and green and lovely. There was only one problem, Jericho. Jericho was a city, but it wasn't just any old city. It was a fortress and it stopped anyone from going into the land. The people looked at Jericho, at the big giant scary walls all around it, at the tall towering ramparts, at the heavy iron gates bolted shut, at each other. Okay, so here we go. Here's Jericho. You can hear Lucky saying, wow. Right over here. I'm pretty sure it was much bigger. This is just an illustration. But look at the... Uh -huh. I know. Look at all the palm trees and look at the people. We're gonna fight. Right over here. I know. We're going to see. We're going to see if they're going to fight. Okay. Continue. All right. What would they do? No one knew. But God knew. And God told Joshua what to do. But Joshua must have must have looked surprised because it was a very odd battle plan indeed, as well as we'll soon find out, which is so true. I feel like a lot of times when God, how God has us fight battles or sometimes he has us do things that are out of the ordinary, things that really don't make sense in our eyes or in everybody else's eyes, but obviously to him they do. Then God made his people a promise. I will always be with you and I will never ever leave you. If you do what I say, your lives, in the, your lives in the new land will be happy and everything will go well. So Joshua gathered his army together. They had their swords and spears and shields, meaning they were ready. They were ready to fight. But the plan wasn't fighting. It was about trusting and doing what God said. So a lot of times we think that we're going to go fight. We're going to go, I don't know, fight for the Lord. Um, but we forget even in scripture how we see in Psalms. I can't remember, I can't remember the, the Psalm. I want to say it's Psalm 46. Um, but a Psalm that says, be still and know that I am God. The battle that we're going to fight is not ours to fight. It's God's. And how are we going to, um, how are we going to fight it? by trusting God, by being still and knowing and trusting in him and his promises, okay? So that's what he told them to do. Joshua's army met, went marching, marching, marching around the city day after day. They're too scared to fight, the people in Jericho said. So a lot of, a lot of times people around us are not gonna even understand what it is that we're doing, um, especially those, those who um, don't love the Lord, they're not believers and saying, what in the world, what kind of life are you living? How, why are you fi fighting this, bat this battle, this trial that way? But again, we are trusting God, okay? Look, he's right over here because he wants to see. So this is Jericho. All around, you see the army. This right here was the Israelites and they were ready to fight. Right? But God said, no, you're going to march, march around the city. Okay? You see it, Luki? You fight and march. I know. Luki's ready to fight, I can see. Yeah. All right. 
But they were wrong. God's people weren't scared. They were waiting, waiting for God to tell them what to do. A lot of times we do that. People think, don't understand what we're doing. And we're just being obedient to what God's telling us to do, being still. Okay, and I know and we are or should be waiting on the Lord. On the seventh day, God told his people to march around the city at once, but seven times. Then God told everyone to make as much noise as they could. Has everyone ever, sorry, has anyone ever told you to make as much noise as you possibly can? Well, imagine that noise. Add 39,999 people making that noise too. And you get the idea. It was ear splitting. Many, they made so much noise, right? And as it turned out, stone splitting too, because the huge strong walls of Jericho just crumbled to the ground. And if, sorry, as if they were made of sand, Jericho vanished in a great cloud of dust. So they followed God, they trusted God, they screamed like they told them, to, like God told them to, and the walls of Jericho came um, tumbling down. Wow! Is there anyone dead? Um, probably the people inside, yeah. Inside the city. Look at all that. Yeah, like sand. Hold on, Bobby, we're almost done, okay? So it was that God's people entered their new home and they didn't have to fight to get in. They only had to walk. God is the one who fights our battles, not us, guys. Joshua said, God has brought you safely here. Now will you do what he says? Everyone said, we promise. Only God can make your heart happy, Joshua said. So don't pray to pretend gods. No, they said, never. I'm afraid they didn't keep their promise, which a lot of times we do too, right? We make promises to God and we say, yes, God, we're going to do it. We're going to do it, but we fail. And it's us to realize that um, God's going to help us through that. Um, God's going to help us through keeping his promises as well. All we have to do is just trust him and ask him. They didn't know what God said. And many years later, just as God warned them, things would go badly for God's people. They would lose their home. Enemies would capture them and take them off as slaves. And God's people would scatter into many different lands. But God's plan was still working. So even though the worst case scenario happened to Israelites, God's sovereignty was still there. And his plan, his plan was not, um, don't, don't touch me, no, no. Sorry guys, his plan um, wasn't be, was, wasn't gonna be affected because God is always in control. So let's think about that in our lives. When the worst case scenario happens, and we're like, what's going on? Things are just, walls are coming down and things just don't make sense. Let's continue to trust in God because his plan for us in our lives is still going to prevail. But God's plan was still strong. One day he would give his people another leader and another home. But this home, no one could ever take from them. And that home is heaven, right? Where we can store all of our treasure and we know that nothing is going to be taken away in Christ Jesus. So this is when they got into their new home. Wow. Okay, here's wow. a beautiful bird. And the dance, the kid's kind of dancing around. No, they're and the dogs. And the dogs. Mommy, yep. this girl is doing a cartwheel. She's, this girl's doing a cartwheel, Lucia said. All right. That's how you do a cartwheel. Yes. All right, guys, so that is about it. Thank you so much for watching. Hey, guys. Hi, guys. All right, we need to stop this video fast before it turns into something else. Mommy. Thank you so much for watching, Mommy, guys. Mommy. Okay, hold on, but let me finish. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully, we'll see you guys tomorrow. And that's about it. Love you. Me, me. Bye. Me, me, Say bye. Bye. bye me. <laughs> Hello friends, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my videos. It actually means the world to me that you guys actually take the time out of your busy day to watch my videos. I have a few messages for you guys. It won't take long at all, I promise. All right, so number one, um, I accept prayer requests. So if there's anything that you are going through, um, anything that you want prayer over, just go ahead and contact me, either through a comment below, an email, private message, whatever way that you want, um, so I can add you to a prayer list that me and my family have, and we pray for every single day. We have seen the power of prayer in our lives, and we wanna share that with you guys. 
All right, number two. If you are on Instagram, you should totally be following me. Why? Because I go live Monday through Friday and I do a small devotional slash Bible study anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, but it's just something that you guys can listen to throughout the day to get you connected to the Lord and to his word. And lastly, number three, if you are not following me, totally subscribe, hit that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. I would love for you to join our family. We have so much fun here. I do my best to upload twice a week, usually Tuesdays and Fridays. And I do videos about anything and everything. I do beauty, I do fashion, I do recipes, I do about my life, I do hauls, I do some of my favorite products. Honestly, a little bit of everything where my kids are involved and it's just so much fun. So I would love for you to join our family if you want. All right, that's about it. Thank you so much. Love you and I will see you in my next video. Bye.